going on everyone? Ramona Shelburne from ESPN gave us a little update in regards to the Utah Jazz and where they stand with some of the players that they need to move. That Utah does, you know, plan on moving these guys and that they believe that they have several deals in place and that whenever that time comes that the Jazz feel like, okay, it's time to make the deal now, they will make those deals, uh, that they're not in a rush, that they're waiting their time. Although, you know, training camp starts in the next you know, two and a half weeks, something along those lines. So I do imagine if a deal does get done, it's in the next, you know, week to 10 days, uh, you know, but they believe, according to Ramona, that they can get a first round pick for several of these players. I mean, she mentions uh, Mike Conley. She mentions Jordan Clarkson, Bogdanovich, that these guys can field and that they supposedly have offers on the table. At least Ramona says her feeling was after talking to these people that they believe a deal is on the table. Now, here's the thing, and this is just, I think this is nonsense, because look, first off, Bogdanovich for a first, yeah, I could see that happening. I really think that there are teams out there that would give up a first for Bogdanovich. Uh, he gives you shooting, you know, he gives you floor spacing, he would be a great veteran for many teams, but who is giving up a first round pick for Mike Conley? She said that there are deals in place that the Utah Jazz can do if they want to do. Which team in the league is going to give up a first round pick for an aging Mike Conley who put up goose eggs in the playoffs? And don't get me wrong, Mike Conley, I think, is a solid player. And if he were to go to a team, I've even talked about him highly. I prefer him over Jordan Clarkson for the Lakers because of what he provides. But Mike Conley is not the grit and grind Grizzlies. Mike Conley. You know, he is older in age. Yes, he could still provide shooting. He could still provide, you know, some defense. A solid veteran that can really handle the ball and do multiple things. But his contract of like 22, 23 million a year for the next two years, which team is taking that on? Which team is giving up a first for Mike Conley? Usually those type of contracts, you have to trade a first in order to move those those types of contracts. Which veteran team is going to take on that salary without unloading a big salary? Like, would a team like Miami trade Duncan Robinson for a Mike Conley? Probably, yeah, because why not? Mike Conley, only half of his contract ne the following season is guaranteed. So, but why would they give up a first round pick unless they just want to move off of Duncan Robinson? Like, the thing that is not being relayed by Ramona in, in the conversation was that you know, the Jazz have to take on players too, and also they have to move off of players. So they can't do like a one-for-one -one swap. Like, I think Miami would do Duncan Robinson for Bogdanovich and Jordan Clarkson and probably give up a first because, you, you know, you're, you're clearing uh, off of the contract. You're getting a guy in Bogdanovich who basically does the same thing as Duncan Robinson, get a nice piece in Jordan Clarkson. I don't even know if Jordan Clarkson would get a first for most teams. He is incredibly inefficient like the guy shot 42 percent from the field the last two years and he only shoots like 31 percent from three especially in a in a nba driven three-point type of league i don't think jordan clarkson fits i mean look at guys like you know montrez harold and you know dennis schroeder guys like that i mean they were six men of the year they were great but teams realized that they're very ineffective. They're very inefficient. Like, why would we go and get those guys? I mean, Schroeder still doesn't have a deal, right? I mean, Montrez Harrell got picked up by the Sixers, and I think that that was a nice pickup for the Sixers, but, like, how much is he really going to play? You know what I mean? Like, that's the problem. Like, these veterans are not... Who's giving up a first-round pick for Mike Conley? Jordan Clarkson, maybe? You know, I, I mean, maybe a team would be willing to give up a first... Uh, like a late first day, you know, a team just throwing out a team out there, but say like Milwaukee, you know, Milwaukee's going to be really good. You know that their, their picks for the next several years aren't going to be very worth of value. So would Milwaukee give up a first for a guy like Bogdanovich or Jordan Clarkson? Sure. I could see something like that happening. Bogdanovich, you're, you're hearing all the reports that, you know, teams want uh, him and teams like the Suns and stuff like that would trade for. I don't doubt that. But what are they giving up? They're giving a first and like Jay Crowder. So then now, now if you're the if you're the Jazz, you have to move off a of Crowder. And yeah, you might have gotten a first, but what are you gonna give up a second or a couple seconds to move off? Like it just it's not lining up. And look, I'm not saying the Jazz are going to do a deal with the Lakers. That's not what I'm saying at all. But what I'm saying is that when it comes to this, like 
How, what, other, what other realistic options are out there? And what, none of these teams are just going to help the Jazz just to help the Jazz. None of these teams are just going to give Danny what he wants. Danny's riding an extreme high. If there was a deal for these guys on the table, let's say... Let's say the Phoenix Suns were willing to give up, you know, whatever. Or let, let's say a deal, uh, let's say the Celtics, who have like a, a traded player exception, right? Let's say that they were willing to take on Bogdanovich, they were willing to give up a first, something like that. Why wouldn't the Jazz do that? Why? Like, why would you wait around and that deal get taken off the table? Like, it, it, I don't believe that Utah has legit deals on the table. They might have some. Like, they might have some deals, but that's not the same thing as, like, legit value deals that Danny Ainge's looking for. You know, if a team, just because a, a team is willing to fleece you and give up a bunch of stuff, doesn't mean that, that you should take that deal. I just think it resorts back to the Lakers. They're waiting for the Lakers. Like, if there was a legit deal on the table, there is no way Danny Ainge, if he could get another first-round pick and move off of these guys that he has to move off of, you, you're telling me that he's just going to wait and see what else develops? Like, okay, maybe a couple days, but why? If you, if you put out an asking price and a team is willing to compromise to that asking price and a team is willing to give you the value you are looking for, why would you wait around? The Lakers aren't going to give up both first for these guys. So maybe you value the Laker, one of the Lakers first more than, than those other first. Okay, fine. But even then, like if you could, you don't need Bogdanovich to do the deal. Like the Lakers could do Conley, Beasley, and Clarkson or something like that. You know what I mean? Like if you have a deal on the table, there's no guarantee that the Lakers are going to trade with you and that the Lakers are going to give you what you want. So why? Why run the risk of, say, let's say, the, stick with the Celtics. Let's say the Celtics are willing to do that deal. Like, who, like, why would you wait for the Celtics to maybe change their mind or find another deal elsewhere or something like that? It's either you're being greedy or you don't really have a legit deal on the table. So it's got to be one of those two. I don't doubt for a second that there are teams that wouldn't take some of these guys. There are teams that would probably take Conley if the Jazz were willing to give up a first. But who's giving up a first-round pick for Mike Conley? Like, I love Mike Conley. I think he is still has some in the tank. I think he could be a real contributor on the right team. But he, no, what team is giving up a first-round pick solely for Mike Conley? You know, the Lakers giving up a first makes sense because you're getting Conley, Bogdanovich, and probably Beasley or something like that, or maybe even these three. Mike Conley, I think, would be hugely beneficial for the team like the Lakers. I think Mike Conley would be beneficial to many teams. I think even like a team like the Sixers, like to have Mike Conley come off your bench, you know, dispel uh, guys like Maxi and uh, James Harden and stuff like that. You get a veteran leader in the locker room that can play some defense, shoot 40% from three, stuff like that. I think Conley would be great on the Wizards, right? The Wizards could use a legit point guard. Uh, I think, you know, Washington, if they could go get a guy like Mike Conley, I think that that would be huge for them. You know, again, doesn't make a ton of mistakes, knockdown shooter, play some solid defense still, that veteran presence, you know, does just enough. I don't think he's the starting caliber uh, point guard for a championship team anymore. I mean, unless you have a guy like Luka or LeBron where it's like, yeah, he's on paper the point guard, but LeBron's handling the ball. Conley's playing more off the ball, but can run the offense when need be. But who's giving, like, the Wizards, the Sixers, all the, like, these teams aren't giving up a first-round pick for Mike Conley. Like, I, like, as soon as she said that, I was like, okay, like, this, this sounds to me like the Jazz putting out reports to just, to get the Lakers to cave. That's what this sounds like. This sounds like a leverage play from the Utah Jazz to me. And maybe it's my bias, maybe it's me being a Laker fan, I don't know. But you tell me a team that is willing to give up a first-round pick for Mike Conley. What team is going to do that and just take Mike Conley's salary just to take Mike Conley's salary? Like, that's the thing that a lot of people are missing. And, like, when I see these comments or when we're doing live streams and we're having these discussions, a lot of people are like, yeah, teams, there's a team would give up a first for Bugged Up. I agree. Teams would. But are they going to give up a first and what? Just take, like, what is being sent out besides that first? Because the Jazz are hard capped and so they can't exceed a certain salary. And, they're rebuilding. So they why would they take on long-term salary even if they are getting a first-round pick? Like, why would they want a guy like Duncan Robinson's salary for the next four years? Like, now you're, now, you're, now you just locked yourself in 
for the next few years. And what happens if a, a star or, you know, a, a mid-tier guy or something like that wants to come to the Jazz or you could sign this guy or you could trade for this guy? Like, who's taking Duncan Robinson's contract? You know, maybe three years from now when it's expiring. Like, it just, you, you got to look at what is coming back because the Jazz can't do just one-for-one one swaps. They can't do a Mike Conley for Duncan Robinson because now they have to move Duncan Robinson or they have to move another guy because they're over what the league requirement is of 15 players. They have 19 players on their roster right now, two of which are on two-way deals. So they have to move at least two players from their roster. Now, they could buy out those guys. They could easily buy out two players. But why? Why when you could get some assets? Even if you get second-round picks, at least you're getting some assets. And also, you're stuck as a rebuilding team that is trying to tank. You have veterans. You have a mix of veterans and young players. So are you just not going to play your veterans? Like, why? Like, how, how long is that going to last for? You know, you're just going to sit them out and then come to the trade deadline? What, you're going to expect teams that are like, yeah, Bogdanovich hasn't played in three months, but let me go trade for him. Like, that doesn't make any sense. You know, and then, what, you're just not going to get the, you're going to, what, divvy up the, the minutes from the young guys to the old guy? Like, you're take, this team is still good enough to take you out of the tank race. Like, they have Colin Sexton, Lori Markin, Bogdanovich, Conley, Clarkson. You know, they got Beasley, Vanderbilt. They got a lot of really good talent on this team that where they could win enough games to just completely phase them out of, of actually tanking and rebuilding. You know, and yeah, they have all these assets. They have all these pieces. But, like, Danny Ainge clearly made a decision. All right, we are going to rebuild. So, if you're, you either, you need to pick a lane. Are you going to rebuild or are you going to be competitive? You know, and so at some point, Danny Ains is going to have to unload these vets because he's going to want it. And I just don't see teams lining up to give up first round picks to go get these guys. Jordan Clarkson is extremely inefficient. He is. He's 42% from the field and he's 31% from three, 32% from three. So he's not at league average in any capacity. He has bad habits because Utah was willing to just let him chuck up shots. If you ever watch Clarkson play with Utah, he takes some of the worst shots I've ever seen in my life. You think teams don't know that? You think teams aren't looking out for that? Like I said, look at guys like Dennis Schroeder. Like, he played, at least he played solid defense and still gave you 15 a game. Like, Clarkson is a liability on the defensive end, isn't efficient. To, to put it in perspective, Kendrick Nunn shot from three the last time he played almost as much as Jordan Clarkson shoots from the entire field. Kendrick Nunn shot 38% from three. Walker, Walker had a season where he shot 40% from three. So those two guys alone, Patrick Beverly shoots 38% from three. So you got three guys on the roster that shoot almost as good from three as Clarkson has shoots from the entire field. Who is giving up picks for that guy? Who's giving up a first for Jordan Clarkson and his multi-year deal? You know, he's on a reasonable salary. I do think he's on a very reasonable salary, only $13 million a year. And I do think he could be a contributor in the right situation on the right team. But again, it's very limited. It, the pool is very limited for who's going to acquire these guys. You know, and I just think it resorts back to the Lakers. But anyway, those are my thoughts and opinions. And as always, I want to hear from you. Let me know yours down in the comment section below. What do you think? Do you think a trade gets done? Do you think it doesn't? Do you think Ramona is right? Do you think that this is just, this sounds like a leverage play from the Jazz to try to get the Lakers to give up what they want? I mean, go listen to her interview. Go listen to what she relays. It clearly sounds like she is, she like the Jazz told her to say some stuff and she's saying it. I mean, her entire, com like it isn't facts. She's like, my feeling after talking to these guys, after talking to the Jazz is that, you know, this, that, and the other, like, it, so what is it? Is it your feeling that it, that they have trades on the table or do they actually have trades on the table? What is it? You know, like that's the problem. Like that's where I was like, wait, this doesn't sound like a legit report. This sounds like the jazz, like a jazz leverage play because you either have deals on the table or you don't. So what is it? You know, it, it's, I don't care about your feeling. I don't care if you feel there's a deal on the table. Is there a deal or is there not? Did the jazz tell you we got trades for these three guys and they're all going to field the first round pick? Like, you know, like, that's what I want to know. But anyway, again, down in the comment section below. That being said, hit that like button. Helps me out a lot. Let's me know you enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Follow by the bell notification. Stay up to date with all things sports. Join this wonderful community and all of our discussions. I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you.